So you're probably wondering how cellulite could save someone's life. Well, it turns out that the root cause of cellulite is also the root cause of a lot of other things. In fact, cellulite is caused by a system of the body called fascia. I'm glad I have a real audience. Raise your hand in here if you've never heard of it. It's a lot. It's always shocking to me because fascia is so significant to our health and we've known about it since the days of Leonardo da Vinci. That's the 1500s, people, in case you didn't know. All right, let's try something else. Who in here has eaten a piece of fried chicken? All right, there we go. <laughs> so you've probably seen it before. When you pull back the fried part of that chicken, there's a white, silky membrane just below the skin. That's the first layer of chicken fascia. And all animals have it, including humans. And the humans I'm about to show you treated their own fascia, and they were able to transform themselves. So let's meet Candace. Candace has scoliosis, and you can clearly see the curve in her spine. Well, she treated her own fascia, and this is her after. Did you know that fascia can actually pull the bones into these curves? Most of us would probably agree in here that hair loss is kind of a genetic thing. Where are my bald and thinning people at? <laughs> you don't have to raise your hand. <laughs> this is my friend Enrique, and he actually lost his hair 20 years ago, and this year he grew it back. Did you know that fascia surrounds every single hair follicle? Now let's talk a little bit about scars. We kind of think it's a skin thing, but this woman had a prominent scar on her shoulder, keloid scar, and then she treated her fascia. And this woman had a large contracture scar on her hip, and then she was able to release its vice grip. Did you know that fascia can actually mangle the skin from under the knee, underneath, and that makes scars worse? All right, so since cellulite has accidentally become my specialty, we're going to talk about it. I say accidentally because I had been studying fascia for over a decade, and it's only been in the past few years that even I made the connection between fascia and cellulite. You see, people who study fascia don't study cellulite, and people who study cellulite don't study fascia. So we all somehow just sort of missed it. But the good news is we're starting to get it together a little bit now. And I think that's a great thing because did you know that 80 to 90% of all women report having it? Now the Mayo Clinic is coming out and this is very exciting because they're saying that cellulite is caused by fibrous connective cords that tether beneath the skin. Now fibrous connective cords is just code word for fascia. And in fact, in the medical textbooks, there's a lot of other code words for fascia that you might have heard of, like sheath, membrane, connective tissue, even arachnoid matter. There's also this myth, you're gonna be glad to know that this ain't true. We still think it's a fat thing, and it's not. It's about the fascia underneath. The fat only takes on the shape of the fascia in which it's pushing up through. So, if your fascia is mangled, then guess what? That fat's gonna be mangled and lumpy and bumpy. If your fascia is shaped like Mickey Mouse, <laughs> then your fat's gonna be shaped like Mickey Mouse. I know, it's just a silly thing. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to drive home that point. But if your fascia is smooth and healthy, then guess what? That fat is going to be smooth too. So let's take a look. I also hope that these are going to answer the question for you. Why do some people have it and some don't? And it's because it ain't about the fat. It's about this fascia tissue. This thin woman has it, 
or had it. Curvy women, where are you at? Can have it. <laughs> women of every single race can have it. Even my personal friend, who's a supermodel, can have it. And so can babies. <laughs> <laughs> And get ready, so can men. Yep. So now I, f I was sitting in the audience, and I had never heard of this thing called fascia. I would be having that moment like, er, wait, what did she say? That these people treated themselves? And the answer is yes. And I hope that this excites you as much as it does me, because all of these transformations ended up leading me down the research rabbit hole. I wanted to find out how and why fascia was so impactful, and we're still raising our hands and not knowing what it is. So I found a team of scientists at the Applied Science Performance Institute, and they performed independent research for me with people self-treating their fascia. So what I want to show you is a picture that literally gives me the chills. So let's talk about what we're looking at, okay? This is a cross section of a thigh. The skin layer is at the top, and the bone layer is at the bottom. And when you're looking at the picture on the left, that was taken on the first day of the study, and then the ultrasound image on the right was taken after 90 days of self-treating fascia. So if you don't know what you're looking at, that's okay. But check out the white stuff. That's the fascia. You can clearly see that it's mangled and distorted in that before picture, and then it's smooth in the after. Remember what I told you about smooth? Smooth legs. All right. And if that's not mind-blowing enough, we learned a lot of other things in the study, things that even I didn't expect. Like, it increased their metabolic rate. That's so important, you guys, because metabolism plays a huge role in us being able to manage our weight. It increased the collagen production. Collagen production is huge for the youth and the vitality of our skin. And my favorite, which you'll find out why in just a little bit, is we saw a reduction in inflammation. You guys, chronic inflammation has already been linked by science to so many other health problems. I see the nodding. <laughs> it's spot-reduced fat. That's so significant because prior to the data in this study, the only way we knew how to spot-reduce fat was by liposuction lasers or freezing it. And as you saw in the ultrasound, the tissue was remodeling. So that means even though we're palpating the tissue at the surface, it's restoring it all the way to the bone. And some other things that you really need to know about fascia. Fascia houses our blood and our nerves. So imagine the impact of healthier blood and nerves, just in general. Fascia also surrounds and penetrates every single structure of the body, including our organs and our brains. So imagine the impact of healthier organs and brains. All this literally just makes me go, wow, what more could we be doing? So I'm here to share my journey of fascia restoration with you. And you're probably wondering, why in the world do I care so much? Well, when I was a little girl growing up in the 1970s, I know that dates me a little bit, I was always looking for new solutions in health because I was born with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. And I was that kid that hated having those needles come out. I didn't want my blood drawn. I didn't want the shots. I certainly didn't want the drugs, and I didn't want the surgery. So I would sit in my rheumatologist's office, and I'd do the splits for him, and I would tell him, 
I'll need those needles today. So I had all these little home concoctions and remedies, and they were able to get me through high school and college. And then you guys remember the huge uh, health scene emergence, and I was that person that was in the gym every day. And I found that the more that I worked out, the less pain that I was in. And I was actually on a really good path, particularly for an arthritic person. And I had learned how to manage my pain until, <laughs> y'all know the story never goes quite that easy, right? So after the birth of my second of three children, I was just having an abnormal amount of hip pain. So I decided to have a procedure called a hip aspiration. It's very routine and I'd had it dozens of times. And what they do is they take about a nine inch long needle and they stick it into your hip capsule. It's not overly pleasant. And they draw the fluid off and usually you feel better. But this time, the needle was tainted. I didn't know that that was gonna be the beginning of the fight for my life, but it was. When I woke up in the middle of the night that night, I was in the most excruciating pain that anyone could have ever imagine. The only way to describe it to you is it's like I knew I was dying, and it turns out that I absolutely was. And I was rushed to the emergency room, and my life was forever changed that day. Within 24 hours, of that needle going in, a bone infection had eroded a very large portion of my hip and pelvis and spread into my spine. And worst of all, I was septic. Let's just put it this way, 93% of people that were in the condition that I was in die. So I was one of the lucky 7%, but Living was not a life in the condition in which I was left in. So let me try to paint the picture for you. So I came home from the hospital, and I was dragging one of those IV bags around, and I had a central pick line straight to the heart. I also had a morphine pump hanging out of my leg, and I had two small babies to take care of. You can imagine, I was terrified that at any moment, they were just gonna rip a cord out. There's also a lot of failure that surrounds this. I remember little silly things like, I had to flip the crib upside down and then reach in and grab my daughter by her little legs and drag her across the mattress. And then holding her to feed her, I just thought I was so weak that I was gonna drop her. And you can imagine that taking care of a two-year-old was no easy feat either. And you know the funny thing, when I look back on it, I didn't mind being debilitated or paralyzed. You know, I was like, I can do that. I had accepted that. But what I couldn't deal with was the amount of excruciating pain that I was feeling. You see, when your nervous system is septic, it sends a signal to your whole body that feels like you're being struck by lightning over and over and over again. And I didn't know if that was ever going to stop, and neither did anyone else. So I remember sitting in the kitchen chair, running that IV, and I was just in a daze of pain. And I just began to scan the room, and I saw fruit and dishes and knives. And I looked at that knife, and I actually started to plan ways to kill myself. Now listen, if you've never really been to that place where you would do it, let me tell you, that is very intense. And I didn't know what to do. So I turned to the one thing that had never failed me, my faith. It was not a pretty moment, me and God. <laughs> I said, God, you either show me the path out of this, or please just let me die. So the next morning when I woke up, he didn't heal me immediately, but he did give me this divine energy and this renewed sense of wanting to go acquire knowledge. 
And I honestly just needed to get out of my own way and know that he's God, I'm not, and that there would be purpose in this pain. And I set out to go find my cure. <laughs> so I returned to what I was doing as a child. I would do food charting and hot and cold tub baths and, you know, exercising and stretching. But this time was different because I had been introduced to manually manipulating my own tissue. So I did it all the time. <laughs> I would rub and scrub and poke and pull and traction. And it was starting to work. Now I remember the first time that I learned a fascia, I was watching a dissection of the human body. And they took this knife and they dug right through this white stuff. And I could look down into the body and see that all of the white stuff was connected. And about five minutes into this procedure, someone said, so we're just gonna clear this fascia out of the way. And I was like, fascia? And I knew that this was gonna be a piece of the puzzle for me because in all my years of studying the human body, even I had never heard of it. So I learned that fascia connects the bottom of our feet all the way up our back to our eyebrow <sighs> and that our jaw is connected through our guts to that hip. And it was most definitely the knowledge of fascia and learning how to treat it that I was able to heal myself. So I started treating my painful hip and spine by treating my foot and my head. I started learning that these long lines of fascia, that you could exercise them and leverage them. I'm such a geek that I actually had papers that were written in Chinese <laughs> translated into English and I would stay up all night totally obsessed with how I could apply this to my own health. And you know what? It worked. I kind of want to do the splits right now. <laughs> so not only was I able to transform myself, but you can imagine I wanted to help others, and they needed it. And I've been really blessed because almost immediately, I was working with some of the best professional athletes in the country. I built clinics, and I even went on to Hollywood and worked with some of the most famous movie stars on the planet and billionaires. Most people would be really happy with that career, and it was. It was a little dazzling and fun. But you know what? I couldn't get it out of me that I wanted to help the masses. What's the best way to help others? I feel like we're in church. We should shout it out. <laughs> Empower them to help themselves. I just needed to get the knowledge out. So by the grace of God and a little help from the Internet, I've been able to educate a lot of people about fascia. I even went on to write a boring book about fascia, and you know what? It became a number one bestseller the first night we pre-sold it. And as I stand here today, 19 years after that hip aspiration, I can surf, I can salsa dance, I exercise every day. Yes, I have the smooth legs. But most importantly, if I get in pain, I know how to get out of it. So what's next in the power of transformation for me? Super easy answer. Just help more people. My life has been the living, breathing embodiment of what fascia restoration can do for someone else. Now, it didn't work so easily for me because the doctors had done all they could, multiple hip surgeries, including a full hip replacement. 
I tried the chiropractors, I tried the acupuncturist, you know, I tried energy healers, nutritionists, even traveling abroad to try to help myself. And you know what? It came back to me. And I knew that this was my place in the universe. So I ask you today to go and gobble up every piece of information that you can about fascia and begin your transformation with your fascia today. I'd like to see you invest in research about fascia. And most importantly, please go tell everyone you know that there is a missing link in our healthcare system. This missing link of fascia just might be the thing that makes someone look better, makes someone feel better, and you know what? You might just give somebody hope that didn't have it, and you might just save someone's life. Thank you for listening. Thank you.